and welcome to the video course for Microsoft Office Word 2016. My name is Patrick Lohner and I'll be your instructor on this course. We're going to start with a little bit about my background. I've been in the uh, IT industry actually for about 18 years, uh, working as a network administrator and a Microsoft certified trainer. And of course along the way I've uh, uh, done my fair share of applications training as well and I've also used the office programs personally every version uh, since I think office 97 uh, was the first version that I uh, was involved with I heavily use uh, of course Outlook Excel PowerPoint Word uh, you know all of those very well versed in the differences the older versions to the new the compatibility issues from an IT perspective but also just using them from an application perspective so I'm excited to be able to go through these courses and share this information with you and get you uh, ready to use the latest version of Microsoft Office In this first topic, we're just going to look at navigating the Microsoft Word program. It's a good thing to know all of the options that you have in the ribbons to be able to kind of navigate your way around the program. Of course, this is one of the uh, most important fundamental tasks that you will learn. So exactly what is Microsoft Word? Well, Word has been in existence for nearly 30 years. It's more than just a word processing program, but at the heart, that's what it is. It is a comprehensive content authoring tool. So it has the ability to create and modify all types of documents. Regardless of what you're going to use Word for, though, a big part of understanding Word is its usefulness within the Office suite, as well as, of course, being able to navigate around. So it's part of the Office 2016 suite of applications, and that just means it's a collection of applications. Each of the individual applications inside Office has a particular purpose, and the particular purpose for Word is a word processing program. You use it to create reports, newsletters, resumes, blog posts, books, articles, anything you can think of that you would want to type, you would use Microsoft Word for. Okay? Now, there are other programs, as we see here in the Office 2016 suite, the Excel program, which is used to create spreadsheets and column data and charts. You have Outlook, which is the messaging program, email messaging program. So you can use that for email, for contact management, calendar management, etc. PowerPoint is the program within Office 2016 to create presentations. So the slide presentation that we're looking at here is made in PowerPoint. Access for access to databases. Publishing is done through the Microsoft Publisher program. It gives you a little bit better graphics and layouts predominantly for brochures and for newsletters, a little bit beyond what Word is capable of doing in some cases. For collaboration, we have the Skype program, which gives us instant messaging as well as desktop sharing and uh, web conferencing. And then OneNote, really for just information gathering, the ability to do digital note-taking to try to remember things, uh, you know, as well as potentially working with others. Now, with Word, as with many of the other programs, we do have a desktop application or a mobile app. When we say desktop application, we're talking about a program that gets installed on traditional computers. These traditional computers would include desktops, laptops, or notebook computers, and then the convertibles. Convertibles are really a, a laptop that also has tablet uh, tablet capabilities. And so you get the most comprehensive feature set in the Word 2016 desktop application. It's also best suited for keyboard and mouse. It does have compatibility with touchscreen interfaces, you know, but primarily for keyboard and mouse. And it does need to be purchased. This is not a free version of the software. Now, you do have a couple of ways that you can purchase. You can purchase just a retail copy from a store, or you can have an Office 365 subscription. The vast majority of Office 365 subscriptions will include access to the Office 2016 applications, of which Word is one of those. Now, we also have a Word mobile app. 
And the mobile app is geared towards tablets and smartphones. In this day and age, everybody has at least one of these, if not more. Uh, It is a limited feature set on phones and other small devices, and you actually only have read-only access if you don't have an Office 365 account on larger devices. But the mobile app is is optimized for touchscreen interface, so it can also be used without a keyboard and mouse, and that's primarily what it's designed to be used, although you can also use it with a keyboard and mouse. The mobile app comes automatically installed on Windows devices like the Surface or Surface Pro, But you can also download it from the Apple App Store for any Apple devices, iPads mainly, iPhones, and then the Google Play Store for any Android type of devices. Now, you got to realize there are going to be a number of features that do not exist in the, uh, the word mobile app. Okay, so that's some types of documents that can't be created, some advanced editing capabilities, most of your keyboard shortcuts aren't going to be supported, things like that, okay? So beyond that, though, there's a lot of similarity between the two applications. The difference is the type of system that they're intended to be used upon. Let's talk about Office 365 a little bit. Office 365 is the Microsoft cloud-based software as a service. And what that means is that it's a subscription service that you can pay for, I can pay for, and we pay for on a monthly basis per user account. And it gives us access to Office 2016 along with a number of other things. The screen here is showing us the Office 365 portal. And if you have a subscription to Office 365, either through personal or business, you'll go to portal.office.com in a web browser to access this page. You can see from this page that you are able to install the Office 2016 programs on your machine. You even have a link for getting it on your devices. And you can install Office with an Office 365 subscription on up to five PCs. You can also use what are called the Office Online apps, and that is Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook. They all come with an online version which is a more limited version. We can see that in the tiles there, Word Online, Excel Online, OneNote Online, etc. And when we click on those, it'll actually take us to a SharePoint location where we can view documents, we can create documents, and we can edit documents. That is not the same thing as the mobile app that we were just talking about. This is a browser-based version of this program. And so it just gives you some limited capabilities But the benefit of it is that you can access that application really from anywhere that you happen to be. When we first open up the Word program, we get what we're referring to here as the Word application window. And this application window will have various areas in which you will insert different shapes, you'll control font, you'll control margins, line spacing, etc. It's based on what's called a ribbon. Okay, and so the graphical menu panel that appears across the top of this is the the ribbon. Now let's start with the, the top. So you've got the quick access toolbar. Those are shortcuts that can be placed there. There are some there by default and others that you can add as you see fit. You really have complete access or complete control, excuse me, of the quick access toolbar. The title bar will be in the middle, top middle of the screen and it will list the title of the current document that you are working on. If you have not saved the document, but you've just opened up a new document, then it will just be called document one, okay? Then it'll have period doc X, which is the file extension. Over on the top right-hand side, we have your minimize, maximize, and close, and we'll look at some of those. Then in the ribbon, where you have file home, insert, design, etc. Those are considered tabs. And so in earlier versions of Office, we didn't have the ribbon. We had a a menu. And so it'd be the file menu, the insert menu. It's really the same thing here. It's just more of a ribbon layout. So when you click on the tab like insert, then the ribbon itself will change and it will be all of the actions related to the insert tab. All of the actions related then to the design tab, to the layout tab. You know, I have always liked the ribbon because it puts things out in front of you. You don't have to go digging through some menu and submenu system. You click on a tab and it shows you nearly all of the options that you have available to you at that point. 
the status bar, or over on the right, excuse me, we have scroll bars as well as on the bottom. If a document is bigger than the window for the current application, then you can scroll up and down using those scroll bars. And then the status bar on the bottom. Notice it shows me the number of pages, the number of words, the language that I'm in. We've got viewing layouts to the right of that, and then a zoom control. So there's a, a lot of things that we can do here just in this main window. Let's talk a bit more about the ribbon. The ribbon is made up of really two parts, the tab itself and then the command group, which makes up each tab. So each tab has a, an organizational title. It represents specific functions in the command group. So the, the file tab, for instance, is going to have access to information about the document, how to configure various word customization options, but then what's on the ribbon is your cut, your copy, your paste, and your formatting. The home tab, as we see displayed here, the various command groups that you've got. You've got fonts, you've got styles, command group related to the paragraph, spacing, bullet point list, left justify, right justify, etc. Then you have styles, uh, then you have an editing group, Okay, notice there that you have a, a hide pin, which, as we'll see, will expand or collapse the ribbon. And then every one of these tabs that you hit is going to have a different selection of command groups. Some additional things on the ribbon there, top right, the tell me helps you find specific commands on the ribbon. It also provides access to help topics. The account button is going to just show you or display the account that you are using. Now, if you are not using a Microsoft account or you are not using an Office 365 account, then that's not going to display anything. It will also give you the ability to switch accounts. There's a share button that allows you to collaborate in real time with other Word users. Now, sharing will be storing this information in a cloud storage location like OneDrive. And once you've done that, then it gives the multiple users the ability to edit the document simultaneously.